Good morning and welcome to morning prayer for today, Thursday the 2nd of July. And today the Church of England remembers the visitation of the Blessed Virgin Mary to her cousin Elizabeth. Um, you can follow the service on the Church of England website, but I have changed the reading so that it actually does remind us about what we are remembering today. So our service begins. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. We begin by hearing the first two verses of a hymn by retired Bishop Timothy Dudley Smith. And it's the metrical paraphrase of the Magnificat. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of the Lord. Unnumbered blessings give my spirit voice. Tender to me the promise of his word. In God, my Saviour, shall my heart rejoice. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of his name. Make known his might, the deeds his arm has done. His mercy sure, from age to age the same. His holy name, the Lord, the Mighty One. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, may we rejoice in this day you have made. As we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep, Open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> the night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. And so now to the reading, and I've chosen to read from Luke 1, verses 39 to 45, where Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favoured that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leapt for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So Mary and Elizabeth, two women who found themselves in less than ideal circumstances for their then given culture. 
Mary, the very young woman, pregnant, yet unmarried, and her elderly cousin Elizabeth, long seen as barren, past her prime, but now having to adapt to the, this unforeseen pregnancy. Mary travelled from Nazareth to the village just outside Jerusalem to see Elizabeth. And that's some 85 miles or so, and it's uphill all the way. And we're told she hurried. Presumably the terrain was not without bandits, robbers, and she was probably eager to check out what the angel had told her about Elizabeth. And this young girl was presumably in need of moral support from an elderly uh, relative, an older woman. And it's likely Joseph went with her, but scholars believe he may well have returned back home to his workshop, leaving Mary with her cousin for about three months. That was enough time for them to deeply reflect, reflect and be supportive of each other. I wonder what Elizabeth must have made of her young cousin arriving, just turning up like that. I don't think we can assume that Elizabeth was expecting Mary's visit, or did she? But upon arrival, when they greet each other, the profound realisation of their entwined destinies, it's quite manifest. And what a destiny each had been given. How would they each in private contemplate their destiny? Was it an uncomfortable, inconvenient burden or a divine privilege of joining into God's family? So do you feel empathy for their situation? Well, this last week I came across some writings of the Trappist monk, Charles de Foucault. In his Meditations of a Hermit, he writes this. How can one pity anyone who is doing the will of our Lord? Is there anything sweeter on earth than to do the will of him one loves? And if it gives one some trouble to carry it out, the sweetness is all the greater. Well, short of such divine intervention into our lives and living in humility, how do we fulfil the will of the Lord? Well, I always think of St. Teresa of Avila. She gives us a steer on this when she tells us this. Christ has no body on earth but yours. No hands but yours. Yours are the eyes through which is to look out Christ's compassion to the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go out about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless now. So for each of us, here is our mission. And the question being, do we see it as an uncomfortable inconvenient burden or divine privilege to be spending time with God's family. Amen. So would you now please join me in prayer? So Lord, we ask, would you give us eyes to see the church you need here in South Leytonstone, amongst our villages. We ask you, Lord, to fill us with your spirit, renew our vision, and enable us to go out in the power of the spirit, to proclaim your love and glory in whatever way is best. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, as we gradually acclimatise to this new ways of being in our post-lockdown world, 
We ask that you give us patience and kindness. We ask for generosity and gentleness and self-control. We pray you will lead us and all we know and all those we love. Lead us forward in safety. And we ask you, Lord, to sustain those who are fearful and those who are now facing redundancy. Bring them to new hope and nourish their self-esteem. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we pray for all those <clears throat> who suffer oppression, abuse, violence and tyranny, either <clears throat> in our communities or as we think further afield. We particularly pray for young people caught up in modern day slavery, in crime, in addiction, in antisocial behaviour. Lord, we ask you will make your presence known in their lives and bring them to a different view, filled with your love and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we ask, Lord, you would bless all who are in situations of feeling overworked or agitated, the overanxious, those who are exhausted, traumatized, and those who are feeling exploited. And we bring before you all known to us who are ill in any way. May they through you find rest and peace and quietness and a means to find relaxation and refreshment. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Collect for today. O oh God, who didst lead the Blessed Virgin Mary to visit Elizabeth, to their exceeding joy and comfort, grant unto thy people that, as Mary did rejoice to be called the Mother of the Lord, so we may ever rejoice to believe the incarnation of thine only begotten Son, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. So let us now say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Tell out, my soul, the glories of his word. Firm is his promise and his mercy sure. Tell out, my soul, the greatness of the Lord to children's children and forevermore. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Okay, I wish you a great day. Stay safe. And I'm looking forward to seeing you soon. Take good care. Bye bye. <laughs>